Hello guys, good evening. Welcome to your session number 10. How are you doing? Can you listen to me? Yes? Yes, teacher. Okay, great. How was your day? Angie, how was your day, Jeffer? Um, so hard because I work all day. Wow, I imagine. <laughs> yeah, so same here. <laughs> and how about your day, Jeffer? <laughs> I have been studying and doing my homework of the university. Okay, so doing the homework from the university as well. Okay, so what do you study, Jeffer? Civil engineering. Oh, civil engineering. Okay, that's really cool. Hey, you have a new look, or is it me who, I don't know, you look different? Yes, I get a new haircut. Haircut, I can see. Yeah, I think I need to have a haircut as well. You see, my hair is a little bit long, but then you look different. Yeah, how important this yeah. is. Uh, normally, I use my hair uh, in this, uh, uh, but, but the person that, sorry, but just but the person that cut my hair was seen, cut my hair lately. Jeffer, can you listen to me? So he yeah. changed. He changed your look. <laughs> he. <laughs> okay, I can see. Well, but I mean, it's from time to time. It's okay to change, you know. <laughs> um, from I don't know different outfit and and look, looks good. Jeffrey. So, well, guys, thank you so much for joining on time. Reina, welcome. Emma, welcome. Javier, welcome, guys. Today we have a session which is about uh, gestures and feelings. I don't know if you guys already investigate something about body language. I remember yesterday I said, okay, can you please investigate something about body language? Did you do that? Yes, Angie? Is it important? <laughs> yeah, it's, please. Is okay. It okay. Um, the the body language is um um unspoken uh, part of the communication, and that reveals your 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 feelings about something or about somebody. You um, uh, there are many there are many uh, body uh, ways to uh, body language for example gestures um, contact eyes uh, um, tone of voice um, space and um, and that's <laughs> okay great yeah that that is a good <laughs> contribution exactly i like when you said um unspoken you know sometimes we don't need to say anything right and see we transmit yeah. ideas i can see who else yeah. investigated <laughs> about you know body language mm -hmm. anybody else Javier, what did you read about it? My pictures. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, <clears throat> in the last weekend, in, in to this weekend has been hard. <laughs> I, had, I had a lot to work. Mm -hmm. I am a bit uh, lost uh, the ten, the teams. Yeah. Um, yes. Solo me tocaron horarios de noche, saliendo sumamente tarde, porque estamos en periodo de inventario, entonces casi está un poco ausente de clase. Uh, I can see. Okay, no problem then. Try to um, update, you know, everything on the platform. I understand yes. sometimes, you know, we have many activities to do, but then I'm glad you, you could make it today. Let's see, Jose or Jeffer, Emma, what do you know about it? Or what do you read or did you have some time? Teacher, I investigate that 
55% is body language in a conversation. And I was thinking that when we use a face mask, we lose part of the, com the conversation because we can see the face of the other people and they can see our face. You are totally, totally correct. And you know what? Now that we're using face masks, um, basically, uh, you don't see if people are, are really smiling because we don't see that. Because basically, the half part of our face is covered, right? Uh, like today, I had the opportunity to meet a new group of class during the day, and I saw all of them really like, I don't know if they were serious or something happened, but I couldn't, I couldn't see their, you know, them smiling. So that's really, you know, I would say that's a disadvantage. Okay. But yeah, you're right on that. But I hadn't even thought about it. You know, I hadn't considered that point, Jeffrey. So thank you so much. Well, anybody else who would like to um, provide any other idea about this topic? Teacher. Uh huh. I think you can you can see maybe if if somebody is smiling with you. Uh -huh. Correct. We can see when that. you see when you see um, the eyes. I suppose. Ah, mm, I see. Well, in my case, it's a little bit. Uh, difficult to understand and to identify that maybe for some might be easy to see if if someone is smiling just by looking at their eyes and mm -hmm. how do you how do you how do you identify somebody is smiling just by looking at their eyes they're more chinese eyes like these or yeah wow. <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> you can you can see that <laughs> okay or maybe or maybe um uh the eyebrows the, okay the eyebrow right they they like move them like yes. this up and down when, the when somebody yes were surprised or or okay. or confused <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Well, today we have some gestures and feelings, which in a way has to do with body language, uh, body language gestures, okay? When you see this picture uh, like this, what does it tell you? What's the meaning of that? I think it means okay. Okay. Do you guys agree with Jeffrey that this is okay? Any other? Good job. Okay, you see that? Good job. Good job. Good nice. Job. Nice. Uh -huh. I think well done. Nice. Okay, good. So let's take a look at some ideas because today this is the topic and we're going to discuss some feelings and gestures. And let's see. Uh, help me, please, Javier, these three uh, points. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. Can you read this for us? Okay. What is body language? It is communication using your body. We use gesture instinct of sound. Gesture make speaking easier to understand. Okay. Do you agree with this? Gestures Sorry, make. Sir. Do you agree with this that gestures make speaking easier to understand? Teacher, uh, someone said me, uh, I can see the part in Spanish. Eh, es que alguien me dijo que preguntara eh, que entendían por desmenuzar. And everybody do this gesture with with the hands this and one. you can explain the meaning of desmenuzar without doing this gesture yeah maybe right <laughs> normalmente cuando le dice para vos que desmenuzar dice no se sé romper pero mientras lo dicen hacen esto ah okay so the importance of adding body or language so you can 
convey the meaning as it is. I hadn't thought about it. And I think sometimes we need to complete the message with our body, like the one you're saying, right? With maybe with our gestures or fingers or hands or uh, maybe any facial expression. Yeah, I think I agree with you with that. <laughs> okay. And what's another one, guys, that you can think in which uh, maybe you don't say anything, but you do one uh, maybe gesture and is saying a lot of things. Can you think about any and any other that you can say just by doing this, you mean something without you um, not even saying a word? What comes to your mind? Maybe this time you need to open your camera so you can show show me what are those gestures. Teacher, that one. I'm thinking we use, maybe we do. You just move your hand like this. I see Angie is doing this, which is a very, very common, right? Hmm. It's very common. Let's take a look at this because I want to, uh, this one. Waving. Okay, guys, if I do this. Okay, guys, you see me? So what do I mean? Maybe. Hello. Or, yeah. Like. Hello. Hello. Okay. Okay. Hello. <laughs> Goodbye. Okay. Hey, what about? Tomorrow. Right. Exactly. What about this one? I am not. I am not saying anything. I'm just Con clapping. Congratulations. Aha. Uh -huh. Exactly. I can do this. If I start clapping, I mean at the end. I'm not saying anything, but I know that if I do this, you will understand the meaning, right? Without me saying anything, right? Okay, and what about number three? Can you read it, uh, Angie, number three? Crossing? Crossing your finger for good luck and hope. Exactly, like this. If you do this because you expect something good to happen right finger crossed and then you're waiting you know something positive to happen and uh when you greet someone you basically shake hands okay and you shake it that means you are what saying good morning uh, like uh a handshake, that what it means, right? Without you saying, you know, or expressing any idea. Well, we have four here, four possible, you know, gestures with your hands. And what about if we use our face or, or any other part of our body? What comes to your mind? Any other? Mm -hmm. What do you do when you don't know anything? without saying a word. You don't, you don't understand the topic and you, you are doubting about something. What do you do? Like, like this, when, when you don't, when, when you have no idea about uh, something, what do you do? This one. Uh, you have no idea, you have no clue, you are doubting, you're not sure. Let me ask, uh, Jeffer, let's suppose you didn't, you didn't, you didn't watch the soccer match, uh, Salvador against Honduras. Hey, uh, Jeffer, what was the score from the Salvador and Honduras match? And then you don't know, what do you do? <laughs> Look at Angie. Maybe do this <laughs> later. How can you describe the gesture? Which one? She's like, maybe <laughs> she's licking her like lips. Angie. I don't know, man. This is very interesting. I don't know. It's like maybe she's chew <laughs> chewing her lips. <laughs> okay. Okay. Look at this one. Let's start. Let's start with this one. Then you. And how do you say this action? Hey, what happened to your best friend? What's this? How do you say this? If I if I do this, I what? Know. 
Exactly, I don't know. I have no idea. I so you, know, right? you basically shrug your shoulders. You do this. And then I'm expressing one, one idea, right? Beats me, as we say it in English, no clue. Look at this one. To say yes, or when you agree, you just nod your head. When you nod your head, it's because you agree. Or you shake it like this way to disagree, right? And then I think there's a country which I don't remember at, at the moment, which they mean the opposite. I'm not sure which country it is. It would be good to, uh, to um, not sure which country it is. That, which one did you say? Um, no. I'm not sure, but there's one that when you do this, when you nod your head like this, it Teacher, means no. In platform form said that is India. Yes. Yes, in platform there is an that's one reading, reading right? And said that yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Good. Uh, India, right? Okay, I think that's exactly. I remember I read it somewhere, which what means the opposite cultural things. And well, you see how important it is to know about culture then let's continue i know there are many more so i just want to how about this one with your face uh, this is very uh, okay angie if i do this what do you understand angie what is it <laughs> like this <laughs> okay i when you... know maybe, maybe i say yes or, or maybe I understand something. Mm -hmm. Like when you wink your your eyes, when you do this, it's because you want to keep the secret. For example, um, ah, yes, 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 yes. Okay, please, like you wink your eye because you want to say, hey, come on, don't say it, don't say it. Okay, hold it, you wink it, okay? When you are drowning, it's because you're tired, right? That's obvious, or you are bored. And it's, how about when you stick out your tongue? I think this is for kids. When you, when you stick out your tongue, that's because you're mocking, right? Making fun or, or flirting with someone. Okay, that's, I'm gonna leave it up to you. When you stick out your, your tongue, Depends on how you do it. Maybe you're flirting, right? Okay. Uh, do you know what flirting is? Yes. Flirting. When you like okay, some, yeah. exactly. You stick out your tongue, like very, I don't know. <laughs> you name it with lust. <laughs> and then you say, wow, and something, you know, strange might happen. What about making faces? Yeah, when you make faces like funny. Emma, do you want to say anything? Can you type the word that you said before, please? Which one? Flirting? Th no, that one? Uh, when you said about something that when you like someone, I heard something about it. <laughs> With last? You were talking about it. This one, the word I just sent, L-U-S-T. No, I remember that someone tell you a uh, notion to that. It's in Spanish, coquetear or something like that. Oh, flir flirting, yes. It's flirting. Flirt, when you flirt, it means uh, coquetear, right? When you flirt, flirting. Flirting with someone, it means that you are, um, I don't know, you name it, <laughs> trying to get something. <laughs> okay, you're flirting with, with someone. Okay, that's flirting around, flirt with someone. And making faces might be for misrespect, disrespect, or trying to be funny, right? When you make faces. Well, these are some other things, right? Let's take a look. I think there are, there are many more that we can bring. And uh, how about this? This is the one I was telling you about at the beginning. When you shrug your shoulder like this, when you shrug them, 
it means you are you show doubt or lack of interest like this when you shrug them uh, or stamping your feet on the ground maybe because you are feeling angry right when you do that when you fold your arms like this you fold it and then it's that you to show that you are not in you're not satisfied with some things like you fold it like this hmm okay come on that's not doesn't convince me okay let's do something now you tell me what about this ones number the first guy when you do this and that the two at the same time this little kid what what is it for you Uh -huh. Anybody? Probably that you are doing something good. You are doing something good. Mm -hmm. What else? Other idea? The one in the middle, guys. Let's see. Good and bad, says Melissa. Yes. Uh huh. And what about the the picture in the middle? I see <laughs> like Mr. Satan from Goku. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So uh, I don't know. They say peace and love, right? Peace and uh, love. Yeah. Peace and love, right? And then I see pictures of people uh, posing uh, for the cameras doing this, maybe. And what about the other one? This one, the one where there are two, let me see this one, let me, this one, what is it? Top secret. Promise. Top Prom secret. Pre uh, promise, top secret. Oh, Pinky okay. promise okay. I heard. Pinky promise, okay. Pinky promise. Yeah, that's very, that's very common, right? Because this is the pinky finger, yes. pinky promise, okay? And what about this one where they are, they are like doing this gesture? They're clapping. Give me five. Give me five, okay, okay, good. Very good, guys. Well, this, you know, there are many more. Um, I don't know if there is one you want to add that we might have forgotten, and it's a very common one. Which ones do you usually use? Which ones are the ones that you use uh, often on your daily basis? You know, I know you use some of them, I know, because we all use them. Maybe, I don't know, I, have, I haven't thought about this. I think the, the, the most common one is when you agree or disagree, right? When you show this. And then this one, I use it sometimes for pictures <laughs> when there isn't anybody else with me. So it's only me and then I don't have all that. I do this. How about you? Which ones do you usually use? Shake my hand to say hello. Can you shake your hands? Okay, good. Now due to this pandemic, we don't shake hands. You only do this, like me to turn my hand. Come on. Okay. okay. Hey, exactly. That's a good one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. We I hadn't thought about that. You go. You go. Come here, please. Come here. Okay. I like that one. I hadn't thought about that one. Good. All right, guys. Let's get. Let's check some now feelings. And well, this is what they say. And look at this one, Pinky Promise. You used to make promises to your friend, greeting, we only shake hands. Air quotes to indicate sarcasm, right? Friends, and then you do this, the air quote, okay? And they say they're going to help me, and then you do this, right? But you know that it's sarcasm, right? And then this one, <laughs> well, there are there, there there I mean there might be more, but then some common ones that I wanted to share with you. And then maybe you already use them, which is really you know 
common in our culture. Now, um, this is on, from the website we've been talking. Maybe I think it's already solved, <laughs> but still, let's take a look at these expressions, okay? Number one, he's biting his nails. Do you guys do this? Or, or when do you bite your nails? When do, when do you do this? Or you don't do this? When you're nervous. When you're nervous, okay. And well, I see people mm -hmm. doing it, but then I, do you think this is um, appropriate? Or how do you see? No. How, Right, what's your impression when you see people biting their nails? It's unhealthy. Unhealthy, okay, I like that. I see something more, I, I don't know. For me, that's disgusting. I yes. don't know, but that's <laughs> the way I see it. Maybe, mm -hmm. and even I see people eating their nails, like, and then as it is delicious, you know? <laughs> well, but that's, you know, depends. <laughs> How about rolling their eyes? When do you do this? When do you roll your eyes? What do you think it expresses? Well, we have already the answer here, but then um, do you do this? Do you roll your eyes? No, it's not a gesture or expression you do. Because I'm sorry. Maybe when you when you angry or or disgusted. Mm -hmm. When you're angry, I can see. And what about scratching your head like this? You're scratching. Well, when do you do this? Or why do you scratch your head when somebody says something silly? I think right. Um, so when you scratch your head, when it itches, <laughs> no, but when there's, okay, and all right, the answer. okay, I like it, yeah, yeah, but you, when something doesn't go the way you want it to, to happen, right, maybe, and then you might say, you might be impatient or something, maybe. How, how about tapping uh, your, your foot? When you tap, you know, your foot, why is it? Do you guys do this? Something is anxious. Anxious. Mm -hmm. anxious. Okay. Okay. What about twirling your hair like this, that twirling? When do you do that? <laughs> I think girls do this, boys. I don't think Jeffrey will be able to do that. Traveling <laughs> his hair because he has a he has a haircut. And but maybe girls, when do you do that? When you travel, you do this action. No, you don't do this. And what about when we try, when try to remember something? Something. Something. Ah, yes, right. I hadn't thought. Yeah, I think. We try. Ah, okay. When the, yeah. uh -huh. when, the, when the people is nervous, is. Mm, when the people is maybe, right? And the last one, do you, <laughs> this is crazy, the number six. Do you wrinkle your nose, guys? Do you do that? Wrinkle is this action. Wrinkle comes from like, do this action. Do you wrinkle your nose? No. Angie, do you do that? No. Yes. Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes. And, and when do you wrinkle your no your nose? When I'm frustrated. When you're frustrated. Okay. All right. I can see. And okay, let's take a look at these uh, feelings. And I want you to tell me uh, which one um, maybe it's a feeling you have experienced or like most recently. Number one, how do you pronounce this one? It doesn't have a number, but then let's see this. Let's think this is number one and this is number two. So who can pronounce the number one? A volunteer? No. Annoyed, excited. Annoyed. What about this one, number number two? 
Word. Word. This one, the next one. Confused. 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 Okay. Next one. Disgust. This. Disgust. 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 What is this gas, this gas, something is missing here, guys. This gas, exactly. This gas, remember that, that when an option or when a when a ed ends with the when a ed ends with the t ed, then we say t. So in this case, it's disgusted. And then embarrassed, and then exhausted. Yeah. Exhausted. Again, exhausted. Exhausted. Okay. And how about this one? The next one. Frustrated. 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 Exactly. Frustrated. Very good. And and then impatient. And what about the next one? Irritated. Irritated. Exactly. Irritated. Yes. Remember that if it ends with the T E D, then we add the extra syllable. Irritated. Mm -hmm. And then nervous, okay? So yeah. which, uh huh? Which one is one of one emotion you have experienced lately, or which one? How do you say nervous? Nervous. In what Spanish, is the pronunciation? Nervous. nervous. No. Nervous. What is the pronunciation? The pronunciation is nervous. 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 nervous, nervous, nervous. Are you nervous? Okay. You nervous, nervous. I feel like as if it's one syllable. Nervous, 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 nervous. nervous. Okay. Um, and then we have once again annoyed, warned, confused, disgusted, embarrassed. Exhausted, frustrated, impatient, irritated, and nervous. Nervous. All right. We have how many? We have one, two, three, four, five. Um, I want you to tell me now um, which one is, let's see, easy or the easiest to pronounce, and which one do you think is a little bit difficult to pronounce, or are they all the same? Guys? Easy? Nothing? Easy. Okay. Is there any other feeling that you might experience when you, or, or what do you do to express any feeling that is not here that you want to add? Maybe let's think, let's think positively. How about when you're happy? What do you do? How do you express that besides smiling, which is uh, or what do you do when you are, I don't know, grateful about something? Okay, let's think about positive adjectives. What's your reaction or, or how do you express happiness without uh, saying a word? Is there any yeah. idea? Mm -hmm. What do you say or, or what is an adjective that you can, you know, bring to the table? Anything? Feelings. Feelings, guys. Positive or negative? Let's think. Let's think positive. <laughs> which oh, ones? Yeah, which yeah. ones do you want to <laughs> happy? Right, happiness and yeah. And uh, which adjective will best describe you, like as person? Let's think about those adjectives that you um, experience more frequent. So, which ones are those? Mm -hmm. Any feeling? Have you ever like self evaluate yourself, which is the one that you are experiencing like most of the time? Are you always complaining about life? Are you always, I don't know, looking at the bright side of things? Or are you always grateful about everything? I, I, yes, that 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 feeling is all all the time on me. Mm -hmm. 
because I am grateful with God for all her for all his blessing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can see you are, you know, you just stole my word. <laughs> you know what? Uh, we have to we have to be thankful at all time, right? Regardless of the conditions that we experience. And then I don't know if I, if I have said this to you, but there was a study, an experiment uh, carried out by an important university, uh, not in our country, and uh, which they had three group of people. I don't know if I told you this already, but then if I have said it, I'm gonna say it again. Well, these three group of people, one group uh, were told to be complaining all the time, complaining for whatever it happens, complain. Second, Second group won't, won't do anything, okay? And the third group will be always uh, expressing gratitude, okay? After a month, they check level of happiness in their life. And they notice that the group who was always expressing gratitude, being thankful, had higher, you know, level of happiness. So that means that if you, if you, are always expressing gratitude about whatever it happens, you are more likely to be happy than if you don't say anything. And even worse, if you over, always complain. So the moral from this is that whatever it happens, look at the bright side and try to be as, I don't know, grateful as possible. That's a tip that I give you. You know, when I wake up and I start complaining, where did I put my phone? I don't find my charger. I, I'm sure I left it here and blah, blah, blah. You know, I, why I don't, and you start complaining, uh, you're gonna have a really bad day. But then if you start, well, thank you, I, I can breathe, you know, it's gonna be a, a good day. And, and you just like basically set your mindset to, you know, to success, how important this is. Well, guys, I'm saying this because we're talking about feelings, okay? Um, what feeling do you think is, you know, another one that we can mention, guys, that is crucial, that is important to, to recognize it in this, this topic? Any other feeling that you want to express or say? There are many, to be honest. Jenny, what? Uh huh. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Excited. Ex excitement or exciting. Okay. Okay. Yes. Being energetic, right? What else? Any other? What is a feeling that represents you the most in your family, work? No other that you want to express? You're sleeping. Okay. Sleeping. <laughs> is it, okay. Maybe is that a feeling? Yeah, you feel your yes. sleep, right? Yeah. Interesting. Hmm. Interesting. Sleepy. Feeling sleepy okay i still doubt it but yeah I, I i will need to double check all right guys so if you have no questions we are going to change topic okay and well um i would like to change topic to a, a really different one and before i display the, the next slide what do you know about moral verse guys what moral verse do you know Any moral bird that you know that you want to share with me? When do we use moral bears? Mm -hmm. Any, you are 12 people connected. So tell mm -hmm. me. Uh -huh. When you Mm -hmm. When you need to request for something, you you may use uh, a modal verb to to ask for maybe uh, you can use uh, can 
cold, may, might, like, remember. Exactly. Uh, for permission, for, for obligation. All right, you see, you have great ideas. Thank you so much for, for sharing your knowledge about this. Yes, modal verbs are all of those that you already mentioned, right? Uh, and then, yeah, we use them for permission, to express permission, to request something. Those are modal verbs. And I want to display the following because uh, the next topic is this, okay? These are some of them, you see? Uh, I think our partner just mentioned it. So modal verbs, uh, they express certainty, ability or obligation, okay? I think this is important, okay? And then if you would like to maybe write it down, do it, okay? Modal verbs, because now we're going to study modal verbs in present, but then as the course goes by, if you have already maybe done the next section, you are going to find um, modal verbs, but maybe in the past or maybe expressing, you know, um, maybe feelings in the past with modal, but then there is a different construction. So this is the first step that I want to remind you about, okay? Because modal verbs are used to express certainty when you are not, uh, when you are convinced, when you are sure about something or not, and ability. Okay, an obligation. Jeffer? Teacher, I have a question. Uh -huh. When every time when we use modal verb, we use the verb in base form in all the modal verbs. Um, if the modal verbs are in the present, yes, or if the modal verb is expressing maybe future or present, the, the verb that goes next, it must be in the base form, there's no way. Only, um, well, let's see, if it is must, base base form, right? No infinitive. But if it's O, this one, O2, this one has the two, it's connected. Uh, let's see, O2, O2 express obligation, right? And then, but then O2 is the only one that has this connector here too. And all of the other ones, are or require the base form of the verb. We can only change this structure when we are talking about modal verbs in the past, that we add something different. We add uh, another word, which we are going to discuss it in another session. But then the answer to your question is base form must go for all of the modal verbs, base form, not to just the verb, okay? And then can, for example, can go, might be, would like, must go, will come, shall. Shall is not that common, but shall is like should in future. It's very formal, not, not very used in common act, like activities or uh, conversations. But then shall is more like um, what is like maybe should and will together, I would say may you know permission or and then should and could well these are the most common ones maybe you know you know other ones or maybe i'm missing one which uh as of now these are the ones that i brought is there any 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 other that we, i am missing here guys that you know should may must can will will is considered a moral verse and also an auxiliary verb any other Mm -hmm. or that that's basically these are the most common ones right yes yeah, all right, all right. which one did you say have is a model have have, have is considered yes, have. have and has are considered auxiliary auxiliary verb have and has they are considered auxiliary verb because an auxiliary verb it helps the verb the main verb to to change its meaning, okay, to have a meaning. For example, uh, when you use it with um, uh, present perfect, for example, you know, but then it's not considered a modal verb, it's just an auxiliary verb, auxiliary. Okay, any other? Okay, 
So let's take a look at this topic. Let's move on. Because time really, you know, goes by fast. We have like 15 more minutes. And let's take a look at this one, the next idea. Okay. Maybe you want to write this down. Okay. Can you order these adverbs by certainty? Certainty means uh, the level of um, or how convinced you are something to happen. Less certain and certain. How would you place them? Take some time. Maybe you can put each adverb above or, or below. Less or, or certain. Take three minutes. When you when you have your um, answer ready, let me know, please, on the chat. Okay, we have some, um, see, how many are we connected? We are 13 people connected, okay? Now, uh, I want you to give me your answer before I show you the suggested, you know, sending, okay, I can see some messages. Let's see, never, perhaps, maybe, possibly, surely, okay, all right. Now, let's do something, compare. If you take a look at this one, compare, this is the suggested one. Mm -hmm. When you're certain about, it can be definitely and uncertainly. And also never is there no other option. You're certain that never, you know? So certain means it's like 100% um, or 0%, but you're certain about this. It's a no for sure. And then we have perhaps maybe possibly, which is less certain. And surely that goes like in the, in the middle, let's say neutral. So this is the suggested one. I don't know if you, um, if you got it correctly or maybe you have you know, the same answer or some of them, you name it. But this is the suggested one. I will give you uh, one or two minutes to, you know, Cap it. Let's see, I have some other here. Never, oh, I can see Melissa has one order. Never, perhaps, maybe, ah, I can see. Ah, I can see how you put it, like never being the zero, right? But then if we're talking about certain, it never is because there's no option. You're certain that this is, uh, is not going to happen. And, Therefore, it's considered certain, okay? And well, this is the way it is, guys. Maybe write it down, give you two minutes more, make the corrections, and that's the level of certainty for these adverbs. Do you use them, guys? Do you use perhaps or maybe? Maybe perhaps is not that common to be used. I had a friend who loved saying perhaps instead of, instead of saying maybe because he said that it sounds nicer. 
I don't know, but for me, perhaps sounds weird. <laughs> Because perhaps it's like same level of as maybe. Maybe when you are writing a text, perhaps it becomes the best choice when you have maybe and perhaps. So, so which one do you usually use? Which, which one from this one do you use when your daily conversation? What is the most common one you use? Maybe. 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 Okay. Any other? Uh... Possible. Possible. Definitely. Exactly. You know, who said definitely? This one, I love this I'll one. Never. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I love this one. This is my favorite one. Definitely. Yeah. Sounds really cool, actually. Definitely. Hey, are you going to do that? Definitely. Definitely. All right. Thank you so much. Let's see. Um, what about if you create one sentence with uh, any of this and you provide it to me? Choose one and create one sentence. I want to see how you use it in a sentence. I'm going to give you two minutes because I only have like 10 more minutes. Create one sentence using this uh, adverb. Think about your daily life. How can you use it at work, your family? Think about your friends, your, your kids, your boss, uh, your coworkers, your colleagues. So how can you use them? Give me one sentence, but open your mic. Open your mic, please. Give me one sentence. Wants to participate? Uh, it could be um, definitely COVID will remain for a long time with us. Okay, so you are using Gustavo definitely at the beginning, right of the sentence. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Let's listen. I want to listen to some other. Possibly will rain. Okay, so you are leaving Melissa at the beginning of the sentence. Definitely, ah, I like to see Stephanie. I definitely don't think I'll last that long in that job. <laughs> I like that sentence. I don't know why, but I like it. Okay, um, take a look at this one. I'm, I want to show you some examples. So you uh, look at this one. How adverbs are used. And it might be very easy, it might be something basic for some of you, but then it is important that we consider this structure, guys. You see, adverbs of certainty usually go before the main verb. Take a look at the first one. You certainly need to be dedicated to become a painter. Second, we will definitely admire your art. Okay, so these two ones, it's suggested. I, I'm not saying, um, well, you cannot, you cannot say definitely we will admire your art. The message will still be delivered. But then well, if you write it or if you want to sound really like proper English, and uh, then you want to use it this way. It sounds even natural. That's why I was saying the sentence uh, sent by, I don't remember who's, who sent it now. I think it was uh, Stephanie. Sounds, when you read it, if you put the, the verb, I mean the adverb before, uh, the main verb sounds better, certainly or definitely, okay? And take a look at the next one, maybe and perhaps. So this is more common and it's suggested to use it at the beginning of the sentence, maybe you will win an, an award. Perhaps you will, your work will be shared across the world. So this is suggested in, in this one. Now can you, now having this idea, can you think about one other example and then maybe you want to share on the chat. I give you one minute, one minute more. 
before the main verb. I will buy a new car this year. <laughs> Sounds like a good plan, Stephanie. <laughs> maybe I will change <laughs> girlfriend this year. Now I'll say that maybe I will change wife or husband this year. Sounds like interesting, right? That's a good plan. No, but getting a new a new a newer car is, is is also a new a good plan. That's really good. Oh, right. Any any other guys? One more. I still have some other example that I want to share. Take a look at these ones. I like these ones too. Uh, let's read them and then we finish with these ideas. Let's see, uh, you still can send me your one. Uh, Jeffrey, read the first one, please. I will. I will never give up on my dream. Thank you. Next one, Jenny. I will possibly visit australia when i older thank you when I, am older. when I am older thank you stephanie next one they suddenly uh, what is the pronunciation surely 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 uh-huh okay. and then they surely recognize her talent. Mm -hmm. They surely, and then this verb uh, class is recognize. 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 Uh -huh, surely like... recognize. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Gustavo, okay. help me please. Next one, she. Probably playing football for a team. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And then Emma, finish it please. We, Emma? We definitely, we definitely love the question. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Guys, one last idea about this. Whenever you have, I don't know if I have said this to you, but then whenever you have one advert that ends with the, the L-Y, is strongly recommended to pronounce the L-Y as an extra syllable, as a separate syllable. For example, positive, Possibly, possibly, surely, probably, definitely. So that's the suggested way to be pronounced. So you, you have divide the li sound as separately, se separate sound, and that's the way you should pronounce it. So you don't force it. Possibly, surely, probably, definitely. And then whenever you have the li ending, so make sure you pronounce it as individual sound that is suggested, okay? Um, let's see, what else? Certainly I will <laughs> I probably speak a lot of things. Good, I like that perspective, Daniel. Okay, uh, what other example do you want to share, guys? We only have maybe one more minute. Questions? Well, if there are no questions, my uh, suggestion is to start working or, uh, on section number four. This week, we have to finish it, okay? Today is Tuesday. We only have tomorrow and the day after tomorrow so we can finish this, um, this uh, section, okay? So in case you have questions about any exercise, guys, don't hesitate to ask. We can, we can, you know, discuss it tomorrow on that session, okay? So thank you so much for joining. Have a good one. Have a nice night and see you tomorrow, okay? Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye, guys. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.